Clinton's biggest backer, her husband, former President Bill Clinton, is reportedly sounding the alarm about her campaign strategy. Sources telling Politico that President Clinton has been pestering his wife's campaign manager almost daily, telling him they need to forget about Iowa and refocus on other states such as Florida, Illinois, Ohio, and Texas. Joining me now to talk about Hillary Clinton's primary battle, National Press Secretary for the Clinton campaign, Brian Fallon. Sir, thanks for coming on today. Uh, according Hi, to this Politico report, it sounds like President Clinton has a lot of concerns about the strategy. I don't think that that report is accurate. And uh, I think President Clinton checks in regularly. Uh, he's out on the trail, as you know, for us. I think he's very proud of the organization that we've built, not just in Iowa and New Hampshire, but across the March states. We have a volunteer-driven organization on the ground there. We're quite confident uh, in the support levels that we see across those March states. So we uh, planned for a close race all along. And as a result, we have multiple paths to the nomination. I think with Senator Sanders, there are appropriate questions being raised about uh, the prospects uh, if he were the nominee. And that's why you see him very uncomfortably having to cite polls in a sort of Trump-like manner. Uh, but actually, I don't think that those polls mean much, because whereas with Hillary Clinton, you have a very tested person, someone that's gone through the ringer, has faced the Republican attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, with Senator Sanders, the scrutiny is just starting to be applied. Well, let's talk about uh, one of the attacks uh, that you personally uh, launched uh, in a conference call earlier today, you and Jake Sullivan, uh, one of uh, Secretary Clinton's advisors on foreign policy, uh, saying that there were serious questions to ask about Bernie Sanders' position when it comes to Iran. Uh, what are the questions to be asked? So uh, last Sunday night at the Democratic debate, in answer to a question from Andrea Mitchell, Senator Sanders stood on the debate stage and said that he believed that we should seek warmer relations with Iran and specifically said that he thinks that we need to formally normalize relations with Iran. Now, there is no bigger advocate of smart diplomacy than Hillary Clinton. When, uh, during her tenure at the State Department, she laid the groundwork for the historic nuclear deal that was struck last year uh, with that country. Uh, but she said at the time when the deal was announced that we need to take a distrust and verify approach, that we can't mistake uh, this agreement for signaling an, an, an entrance to, towards warmer relations with Iran. They're still a, a state sponsor of terrorism. Mm -hmm. They're still sworn to want to wipe out Israel. And so it was very dangerous and a grave underestimation of Iran that he would say that. In the, in the last couple of days since that debate, when Senator Sanders has been asked about that statement, mm -hmm. he's refused to defend it, reiterate it, or in any way expound on it. Right. So I think the question really needs to be asked, was that just a matter of him not understanding the question, or does he really stand by that position? And if so, he needs to explain why. Uh, we're, we're running out of time. I just want to ask you uh, about Secretary Clinton in that NPR interview um, that you heard in Brianna's piece. She said she's never sent or received anything marked classified. The candidate's entire defense seems to be pinned on that world, on that one word, marked classified. It, it seems very clear from the intelligence community that some of the material was classified, whether it was marked that way or not. No, that's uh, that's actually not the case, Jake, because we know that last August when this inspector general who leaked this letter or well, who we don't know that he sent a letter, it. correct, I, I should say that he uh, mis he. He uh, sent a letter to the Senate quite, Intelligence Committee. Yes, and it's quite inappropriate that he even sent that letter to Congress while this Justice Department review is going on. So did he leak the letter directly? Probably not. Did he have every expectation, probably, that that letter was going to be leaked by the members of Congress to whom he sent it? Probably. In any case, he made this allegation back in August, calling two of those emails top secret. That finding has been challenged by the State Department from the very beginning. And in fact, there was a political report two months ago that suggested mm -hmm. that the rest of the intelligence community was inclined to side against this inspector general. I think that disagreement is the exact reason why this inspector general inappropriately decided to send this letter to Capitol Hill, probably with the hope, if not the outright attempt, to uh, have it be leaked. Well, you're, you're, uh, you're stating a lot there that, that are, is facts, not in evidence, if we were in a court of law. but. I appreciate you advocating for your, for your, uh, for your boss, Brian Fallon. Uh, thanks so much. Good luck uh, surviving the storm.